Barrel correction. Right, let's explain how this works. It's a bit of a follow on from whenever the last video was uploaded where I was explaining about render resolution in Steam VR. And I just lightly touched on the way that VR graphics are rendered in like a barrel shape to accommodate the fact that the lenses we look through have the opposite effect to a barrel shape. They create a pincushion effect. So I'm gonna put up on the screen now a picture of these two different types of distortion. So you can see on the right hand side there, we've got pincushion distortion. And you can clearly see the image is not square like it should be. It is pinched in at the top and bottom and at the sides. Now this is what the lenses in our VR headsets do to the image that is being displayed on the LCD or OLED panels behind the lenses. Now obviously that's no good to us. We don't want to look at our virtual reality world and it'd be squished um, like, like this pincushion effect you see here. So what the developers have to do is render the game in the opposite effect of pincushion distortion, which is barrel distortion. That's the image you see on the left. And so you'll notice that the top and bottom edges and the left and right hand edges, the sides, now protrude outwards rather than inwards. And I don't know if you can really picture this, but the center of the image on the barrel distortion technically is pointing out the screen towards us and the opposite in the pincushion one. Technically that's sort of pointing inwards a little bit. Now. They're, they're exact polar opposites of each other. So what happens is when you look at a barrel distorted image through a pincushion lens, you get a nice flat image, which is exactly what we need to see through our VR headsets. We don't want to see a barrel distorted image and we don't want to see a pincushion distorted image. In fact, you may have seen this barrel distortion view when you look at some VR games on your PC monitors. So if you're, you take your headset off and you look at your PC monitor, sometimes you'll have like a cropped flat image. Other times you'll see two images, one for the left eye, one for the right eye. And in those instances, they are quite often barrel distorted. You can literally see the curvature across the middle of the image. That is actually what's being displayed on our LCD or OLED panels in our VR headsets. But we don't see that in VR because our lenses apply that pincushion effect because of their nature, the, the shape of them, the focus of them, cancels one another out. Now, that's where the phrase barrel distortion or barrel correction comes from because we use that barrel distortion to correct the pincushion effect that we would otherwise have looking through those lenses. Now, Doing this barrel correction, if you, were to, if you were to render the image at the native resolution of the VR headset, let's take the G2 for example, it's nice easy numbers to work with, 2160 by 2160 per eye. If you were to render the image like that and then apply the barrel correction or barrel distortion, what actually happens to that 21 by 60 by 21 by 60 image is it actually gets slightly smaller than what it, because it's been distorted than what it should be. If you were to then look at that image through the pincushion lenses, yes, it would be flat and it would look how it should look, but there would be black edges around the image and around the image around the image, and your field of view would seem much smaller because the image cuts off here instead of cutting off here where it's where it shrunk a little bit by applying that barrel distortion algorithm. I don't know exactly why it shrinks when you apply a barrel distortion algorithm. I couldn't find that out in my research, but it, but it does and we need to know this because this is the point where the developers go, right, okay, we've corrected the pincushion distortion. The image now looks nice and flat like it's supposed to, but it's too small and the field of view has dropped. You can't see as much as what you could previously. So what they do to work around this is to, the re is to render the image larger in the first place. And this is where your higher resolution, the native of your panel comes into play. You can see it now, it makes sense. If the image is too small after you've applied your barrel correction, the easiest solution, you could zoom in of course, to fill the field of view a little bit, but then you're not seeing as much in the VR headset, you've just zoomed in to get rid of the, the edges, so to speak. So it would look like we're just really close to everything, I imagine is how that would look in VR. So they don't do that, 
They keep the nice flat barrel corrected image as it should be, and they just add more pixels to the sides and the top and bottom. You get a slightly bigger field of view because of this barrel correction effect. But of course, a bigger area, a bigger field of view, more pixels means a higher render resolution. And this is why in VR headsets, you can't focus on the native resolution of the screen from a uh, sort of GPU load point of view. You have to bear in mind, we're looking through pincushion lenses at a barrel corrected image that as a result of that is being rendered 40 to 50% higher resolution than what the panel we're looking at it on actually is. Now, that's, that's, the, that's the solution. Barrel correct it, make it bigger so that we can, we can still see it in front of our eyes. Now, the other thing that happens here when you do this is because the barrel corrected image started off life as a barrel shape, so slightly rounded in the midsection, a bit like me at the moment, I might add. Once the pincushion lenses then counterbalance that shape and flatten it back out, you actually get greater pixel density in the middle of the image where we're looking straight forwards than you do around the edges. And it's in that middle area that you're getting your, your near to one to one render resolution versus native panel resolution display. And as I say, the more you get towards the edges, the more that drifts slightly out and it's not it's not one to one anymore. But the bit where we're looking, the part you know where your eyes are mostly focused, if you want it to be as close to one to one render resolution to native resolution as, as it can be, you have to render it at a higher resolution because of the barrel correction that is applied. That's why when you look in Steam VR and you set the slider to 100%, whether it's in a G2, whether it's in a CV1, whether it's in a Rift S, a Valve Index, whatever it might be, that 100% resolution is always going to be higher than what the native resolution of the panel is. And this is why it does it, to take it from a pincushion image, um, apply a barrel, sorry, take it from a, a pincushion effect that the lenses create, apply the barrel correction, and boom, we've got a nice, proper rectangular. Sorry for that poor transition, the battery just went flat in the camera. But yes, just to summarize, um, that's how it all works. That's why we have to render at a higher resolution. This is why it's really hard to run the G2 and the Quest 2 for our graphics cards, because it's rendering at such a stupid resolution. The G2, for example, two and a half times the resolution of a 4K monitor. And 4K monitors are really hard to run in gaming, you know, even at 60 hertz, let alone 90 hertz, and you're doubling the pixels and adding another 50% more again. So yeah, hopefully that was a clear and, and relatively easy to understand video. Any questions, stick them in the comments. I am no expert on this, by the way. This is just my own research, you know, for my own understanding that I thought I'd share with you guys as well. So if some of you know better and genuinely know better, no trolls, by all means, <laughs> You know, comment in the in the uh, comment in the comments, and we'll have a little chat. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and take it easy.